Hello guys, welcome along today, thanks for joining us. Uh, today we're going to be looking at motorcycle charging systems, running through the basic components, how we can test them, what readings we'd expect to get, and hopefully fixing a fault on this Yamaha XVS 1100. So to start, let's just talk about some of the symptoms that the owner had with the motorcycle. As he was riding along, he noticed that the speedo started to drop out and not actually register correctly. And then he pulled up to a set of traffic lights and the bike cut out. As he went to restart it, all he had was a click from under the seat and it wouldn't run. So we've gone out to look at the bike. And indeed, as he'd gone to start it, all you can hear is the starter solenoid clicking and the dash, the mileometer, dimming and disappearing as you're trying to start it. So we've brought it back to the workshop, put a jump pack on it, started the bike up and it started absolutely fine. And then we've removed the jump pack and used a multimeter set to DC, which is the voltage symbol with the solid straight line. And it was reading 10.7 volts as the bike was running at idle. That's not enough. We should be looking at at least 13 volts, hopefully between 14 to 15 volts really, but that is not enough voltage. So I believe the battery is not charging. So we've taken the battery off, we've put the battery on charge and we're now going to do some testing on the charging system to see where the fault lies. So the charging system of a motorcycle is made up of three main components. The generation of electricity is carried out by the stator, the conversion of the electrical energy from AC to DC and the regulation of the output is done by the regulator rectifier and the storage of the electricity is obviously held in the battery. So let's look at each component in a little bit more detail. So the stator is normally located on the, under a cover on the side of the engine and consists primarily on modern motorcycles of three coils. These coils interact with the rotor and as the interaction of magnetic fields occurs, you get power generation into the stator windings and output to the regulator rectifier. This is done in AC and we, to test the stator, we'll need to check the resistance of the windings and we can also check the AC output. So here on the multimeter, the first thing we need to do is set our multimeter to ohms which is here. Now, as you can see from our spec, the reading for this data is 0.36 to 0.44 ohms at 20 degrees Celsius. So what we need to do is find the plug from the stator. Now on most modern bikes, like we said, it's three wires, a three winding stator. So you'll have three wires, <clears throat> excuse me. Normally they are a white wire or could be a yellow wire or a black wire, but you'll normally have three wires. This is where it actually goes into the regulator rectifier on this bike. So we've also got the two output wires from that. Uh, don't, do bear in mind, you may have another connector further up the loom where you just have the three wires from the stator if you wanted to test it up there. So what we need to do, get our multimeter set up. Hopefully you can see there. And we need to check the resistance from each winding. So we will go from terminal one across to terminal two. We can see we've got 0.9 of an ohm. Leave terminal one in and go to terminal three. Again, 0.9 of an ohm, and then take the out of terminal one into terminal two, and we have 0.9 of an ohm. So you might be thinking this is too high. This is higher than your 0.46 of an ohm. You are correct. However, always remember to test the resistance of your test leads and here we can see they're actually 0.5 of an ohm. So the reading of 0.9 is within the specification for that stator. Also, don't forget that the temperature will make a difference to this. So it does specify at 20 degrees. We're a little bit colder than that this morning. Just something to bear in mind. So I'm happy the resistance of that stator is good. However, it may test okay, but once the bike's warmed up, you could then get insufficient resistance readings. If the stator was open circuit, the windings were broken from one end to the other, we would read this OL, open line, which means it's an open circuit. That means the stator would need replacing, or we may get the wrong resistance readings, which means there's a high or a low resistance in that stator, which again would mean the stator might need replacing. Once we're happy, we've checked the windings from coil to coil and we've got good resistance readings. We also need to check they're not shorted to ground. So we need to connect, still leaving the multimeter on ohms. We need to connect one lead to either the negative lead of the battery or a good chassis or engine ground, and then carry out the same process and probe 
each connector and make sure we've got open circuit between each winding and ground, which proves the stator is not shorted to ground. Now the next check we could do is what's known as a dynamic stator test. So this is actually testing the stator with the bike running. Now we're gonna to need to have the stator unplugged from the charging system when we do this. So make sure the battery is fully charged before we do this, otherwise the bike won't obviously start or run. We need to select voltage AC, which is the wavy line above the volts. And then we would carry out the test in the same way as resistance check across the three terminals, moving the pins, but with the bike running. And at idle, I'd expect to see somewhere between 50 to 20 volts AC at four to 5,000 RPM, more like 65, 70 volts AC. There would be good readings. Now, unfortunately, we can't carry out that test on this machine because I've had to take the exhaust pipes off to gain access. Uh, trying to do a dynamic test on this stator would be like being next to the Saturn V rocket at liftoff. So I'm happy we've done the resistance readings. Let's move on to checking the regulator rectifier. So this guy is the regulator rectifier, does exactly what it says on the tin. It rectifies the voltage from AC output from the stator to charge the battery, and it regulates the output not to overcharge the battery. Now, we should be seeing somewhere between 14 to 15 volts output of this into the battery. We can use a multimeter to check the diode circuitry inside of here, but to be honest with you, the easiest way to check these is as we did at the start, when we had the bike running with the multimeter set to DC volts, you can either check the output from here, which will be on the red and black wires down on the plug, or at the two battery terminals, which is what we did, and we had 10.7 volts. So like we say, that is not enough. So I believe, after checking the stator resistance, that being okay, I believe that the regulator rectifier is actually here at fault. So this is quite a common problem on a motorcycle, and you might be asking yourself, why does it fail? Well, to be honest with you, a lot of the charging system on motorcycles is very close to its capacity as it comes out of the factory. So when you start adding new components like uh, heated grips or maybe a sat nav or big spotlights on the front of the bike to see better at night time, maybe even a heated ashtray, they are going to put extra load on the charging system. So you need to make sure of the output of your charging system before you add any of these optional extras. Uh, another thing to remember is the stator is actually right on the end of the engine, which gets very, very warm. And for some reason, a lot of manufacturers have, in their infinite wisdom, located the regulator rectifiers in areas that get hotter than the inside of a cheese and bean toasty, i.e. right by the exhaust pipes. So with the uh, complex electrical circuitry inside them and the fragility with the vibration from the bike, they are quite common to go wrong. You can see here on this R1, it's actually been relocated right to the outside to get good airflow over the heat sink. However, that will be sacrificial if you do have an accident. So it's pros and cons. So let's get this new reg rec on there and do some more testing. So here is our new regulator rectifier. And you can see it is quite substantially smaller than the original unit, even though the part numbers are the same. This is just through uh, evolution of technology and electronic circuitry inside. So let's get this bolted in, plugged up, pipes back on the bike, and then we can start it up and do a charging test at the battery, and hopefully this will have fixed our fault. So now everything's back together, let's get the multimeter across the battery terminals, get the bike started and see what output we've got. So here we are, battery's all connected up, we've got the multimeter set 
to DC volts, reading 12.49 from the battery, which is good. Now we're gonna start it up from cold start. We're hoping idle, it should be making over 14 volts. We'll then let it warm up a bit and increase the revs to four to 5,000 RPM. Double check it's still charging at over 14 volts. Again, with all of these specifications, read your manufacturer's specs to get the accurate numbers. And also no, worth noting with all the connections we've looked at, if you want to check the wiring, you can do the same checks somewhere further down the wiring line to make sure the connections, terminals and wiring is good. So let's get it started up and see what she puts out. warmed up at idle and hopefully you can see we're still reading 14.8 good voltage we're going to increase the revs make sure that stays roughly the same or increases so there we have it guys another job complete another motorcyclist back out on the road enjoying the summer thanks for watching hope you've learned something from it join us next time ta-ta